Did you know? Not only was Super Mario Odyssey specifically made for the Switch, it was balanced to appeal to both core and casual gamers. The game's developers knew the Switch's portability would lead to some playing in short bursts while commuting to work or school. Because of this, the team decided to include many collectible moons that were easy to grab in short bursts. The team at Nintendo also wanted to make full use of the Switch's Joy-Cons during development. They thought the Joy-Cons were a good fit for a throwing gesture, and decided to have players throw something in the game. They settled on throwing Mario's hat, since it's already an iconic part of Mario's character. Nintendo were also working on a capture mechanic that let players take control of objects and creatures in the environment. However, they didn't have an intuitive way for the player to possess the objects around them. The team experimented with using Mario's cap to possess enemies, and the two mechanics were combined into one, which also helped define the character of Cappy. Interestingly, the capture mechanic was only in development for a few days before it was chosen to be a significant feature of the game. Nintendo purposely planned for the first possessable creature to be a frog. Since jumping is the core mechanic of the Mario franchise, the frog's jump would instantly show players how capturing objects can affect gameplay. Not only did the Switch affect how the game was designed, Odyssey impacted how the Switch itself was developed. Odyssey producer Yoshiaki Koizumi suggested in an interview with Metro that HD Rumble was added to the Switch so he could use it in Odyssey. The timing on this may seem strange, but Koizumi teased Odyssey in Edge magazine all the way back in 2014 while the Switch was still being worked on. The team challenged their assumptions about how to make the game accessible to younger players. They were unsure if younger players would need a fixed camera to keep things simple, like in the Galaxy games. This concern was put to rest after they realized young gamers were easily able to grasp the controllable camera in Minecraft. Removing the lives mechanic was also done to make the game more accessible. Although experienced players would rarely see a game over screen, inexperienced players could end up seeing it a lot. Removing lives also removed any discouragement felt from getting a game over, and new players wouldn't be deterred from exploring and investigating the game's sandbox. The sandbox nature of the game was a very important inclusion, and was one of the first ideas to be implemented. They chose a walled garden sandbox environment so they could experiment with the endless stream of ideas they had for the game. The choice of using a walled garden also influenced the direction of Odyssey, and brought it closer to the gameplay style of Mario 64 and Sunshine. That said, the team challenged themselves to include elements that might not fit in a conventional Mario game. They wanted to capture the unfamiliar and unsettling feeling of being in a new place for the first time. This is why the game has many elements that seem out of place at first, such as the T-Rex and the realistically proportioned humans in New Donk City. Nintendo also places realistic people in New Donk City to give players a sense of scale for the world, helping them understand how Mario moves and jumps in relation to real people. The presence of anatomically correct humans led to many fans asking whether Mario was actually human, as he's so different to the new Donkers. In an interview with Vice, the game's director, Kenta Motokura, confirmed that Mario is human, saying, quote, Mario is human. In the world, there are many different types of people, you know? Speaking of New Donk City, Pauline was originally going to be the city's princess. However, the role of princess didn't seem to fit a city environment, and she was made the mayor instead. This also gelled better with Pauline's musical persona. The lyrics to Odyssey's main theme, Jump Up Superstar, had to be completely rewritten when brought to the West. This was because the Japanese lyrics didn't have much of an impact when they were translated literally into English. The song's first English rewrite relied heavily on the listener's familiarity with Mario, and Nintendo of America requested more rewrites that would resonate with a casual audience. They also wanted the lyrics to be simple enough for non-English speakers to sing along to. This strategy paid off, and Jump Up Superstar broke into the top 25 music chart when it hit the North American iTunes store. It should be noted that this accomplishment is especially rare for video game music. Interestingly, Kate Higgins' performance for Jump Up Superstar was recorded before she acted out any of Pauline's lines for the game. The director didn't even talk to her about what Pauline should sound like until after the song was fully recorded. These aren't Odyssey's only audio secrets. The game's sound effects harmonize with the background music by changing pitch and tempo to match the music. This was done to a lesser extent in previous Mario games, but is most noticeable in Odyssey due to its abundant sound effects. When creating music for the Luncheon Kingdom, the game's musicians used actual cooking utensils as instruments. Some chops and clangs are the sounds of knives and ladles, helping cement the level's theme. 
Although Odyssey's levels all have a unique and consistent theme, they didn't start out this way. Each level was made with a different gimmick in mind, and an appropriate theme was added after. Basing the game's desert stage on Mexico came from director Kenta Motokura's trips to the country. Mexican culture left a strong impression on him and found its way into the level, as well as a costume for Mario. Other levels take more inspiration from media than the real world. The Wooded Kingdom has several similarities to the 1972 science fiction film Silent Running. The movie takes place in a giant greenhouse maintained by robots, with these robots greatly resembling the Steam Gardeners in Odyssey. The music from this area was also directed with a 60s theme in mind, loosely reminiscent of the era the film came out in. The Metro Kingdom is arguably the game's focal point. Interestingly, Odyssey might not be the first time New Donk City has appeared. In the instruction manual for Donkey Kong Land, it states that the game's Big Ape City is the location where the original Donkey Kong arcade game was set. It's been heavily implied by Nintendo that New Donk City is also the same place where the original Donkey Kong game took place, suggesting they are the same location. Other aspects of the game also reference media and world cultures. Jaxies are likely based on Komainu, which are Japanese lion statues that protect shrines and temples from evil. Old fables about Kumainu statues mention them suddenly coming to life, similar to Jaxi's. The name Jaxi is a portmanteau of Jaguar and Taxi. However, their Japanese name is Raidon Bas, which is likely a mix of Raion, the Japanese for lion, and Raido, which means to ride. Another interesting fact is that the Jaxi's mane isn't a part of its body, it's actually a necklace. The Brutals seem to have a connection with Odyssey's setting. It's likely their relationship with the moon is based on the mythological moon rabbit, a creature inspired by markings on the moon which vaguely resemble a rabbit with a pestle and mortar. With the game's T-Rex design, Nintendo stayed close to the Tyrannosaurus Rex from the 1993 movie adaptation of Jurassic Park. Modern science depicts T-Rexes with feathers and more color, but these interpretations aren't as well known with the general public. This is likely why Nintendo went with a scientifically inaccurate depiction for the creature. The Sherm enemy might be named after the American M4 Sherman tank, which was frequently used during World War II. The Sherm seems to be connected to Odyssey's unusually high age rating for a Mario game. Odyssey is the first core Mario title to receive a B age rating by Cero in Japan and an Everyone 10 Plus rating by the ESRB in America. All previous core Mario titles were rated A for all ages in Japan and E for everyone in the States. The ESRB's own notes state, quote, During one boss encounter, players can capture a cartoony tank and fire cannonballs at a mechanical boss. This seems to point the blame at the Sherms. The game has many hidden secrets and unused ideas. The original texture for Odyssey's world map actually featured Isle Delfino from Mario Sunshine. Although the island was removed in the final game, it seems the developers forgot to remove it from the Odyssey globe's roughness and normal texture maps. As a result, Isle Delfino can still be seen slightly at certain angles. The game was also planned to have references to other Nintendo franchises. Odyssey's code refers to a Link hat and a Link suit costume set which are labeled as, quote, a hat from a far off land, and, quote, this outfit from another land comes complete with back accessories, sadly non-removable. The data additionally references a Santa costume, a zombie costume, and an 8-bit Mario hat. Many of the concepts for hats were originally drawn on Goombas, which also showed the Santa hat, among others. Speaking of costumes, Odyssey's Super Mario 64 costume doesn't actually use the same model as Mario 64. The model is altered and contains roughly 200 more polygons. This is mostly due to it being cut in half and mirrored. Since the original Nintendo 64 model was slightly asymmetrical in its use of polygons, there were a lot more polygons around the seam where the model was cut and mirrored. Odyssey also contains a modified version of the small Mario sprite from the original Super Mario Bros. The sprite went unused as Mario is never small in the final game, but the effort put into it could imply that a small Mario was planned to be included at some point. The game's internal project name is Red Star, continuing a theme of Mario titles being named after red objects. Super Mario 3D Land was codenamed Red Pepper, Super Mario 3D World was Red Carpet, and Super Mario Run was Red Bull. In the Japanese game and early builds of the English version, the binding band was named The Wedding Ring. 
This was likely changed in the Western release to avoid any religious connotation. There's also an interesting tidbit surrounding how the game tracks the player's progress. Although the Odyssey will count to 999 power moons, there are actually much more than this in the game. Odyssey has 880 moons listed as missions, the rest of which need to be purchased with coins at shops. The game will actually track 99 moons from each shop in the game's power moon list, and only the first moon purchased at each shop counts as a mission. This means there's an additional 98 moons at each shop. There are 13 shops in the game, which multiplies to 1,274 non-mission moons. Adding 1,274 to 880 brings the total to 2,154 moons, which can be tracked in the game. Did you also know that Breath of the Wild's Korok seeds are actually poop? Or that the game's monks are all named after development staff? For more facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Breath of the Wild. And if you want to watch something I made, check out this video about Mario Galaxy. It's about the, like, level design and how I feel about it and stuff. It's a good time. And I also stream sometimes on twitch.tv slash streaming. So, goodbye.